The song we just sang had in it each thought and each motive under his would be God's control. Well, we're free moral agents. We have the power of choice, and that will not happen simply because it ought to. It'll happen because we desire that it happen that we will be under the will of Jesus Christ. Now, the only place there is to find what Jesus would have us do to be saved from our sins, have us to live the Christian life once we become Christians, is in the Bible in general, the New Testament of Jesus Christ in particular. These books have words in them. Sometimes because faithful members of the church have talked about the importance of the Bible, the importance of the Word of God, people have accused us of actually worshiping the Bible. Well, that would be false. You can't know that book and think that you would worship it because that book being the revelation of God's mind to us and for us regarding our salvation and our approach to God tells us that God is the one to be worshipped. God is spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. But now that's in the Bible. So I know the will of Christ because of the words of Christ. If you don't know the words of Christ, you don't know the will of Christ. So for a little while, I wanted to notice a number of passages having to do with simply the Word of God. In Hebrews 11 and verse 3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Now, James, or rather John, chapter 1 and verse 1 is speaking of the Word, the eternal Word, who would become flesh, thus the Christ. John 1, 1 and 2 and verse 14. And you'll see in that passage that whatever was made was made by Him. Yet here the writer of Hebrews says that they were framed by the Word of God. But Jesus is the eternal Word, isn't He? He is the executor of the Father's will. He is the one who carries out those things. In Psalm 33, 6, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. And there's complete harmony with what we read in Hebrews 11. So there from the Old Testament and the New Testament, we see the power of the word as far as God speaking it concerning created things and the very person of the Godhead who executed the Father's will. We know that the writer of Hebrews also said, for the Word of God is quick and powerful. It's active, it's alive, powerful. And thus, if you want to preach the power of God pertaining to salvation, you preach the Word of God. And thus, you find Paul saying, in the Word of God, to the letter he wrote, to the church in Romans that he wasn't ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it's the power of God unto salvation. Now we've seen the word used to create all things and the one who did, who did it is called the eternal word. And yet we see that it's the word that declares the gospel of Christ, the glad tidings of Christ, the power of God to save us. Psalm 119 verse 130 the entrance of thy word giveth light. Well, of course, he's speaking of spiritual light. He's talking about how we are to live before God in an acceptable manner and what we're to do when we're teaching the word of God to others. And thus we sing many times, send the light, the blessed gospel light. In Psalm 119 and verse 130, you can see the impact in the very 
environment I was just speaking of it, the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. So if we would have understanding about spiritual matters, it'll have to come through the word, the gospel of Christ for the Christian dispensation, for it's the power of God to save. Psalm 119 and verse 50, For thy words hath quickened me. Now, to say quickened means made alive. About the only time we use today quicken in that way is when you clip your fingernail into the quick. You know it's alive, don't you, <laughs> when you do that. So that's the idea. It, your, your picture is, is dead in your trespasses and sins. And what's going to make us alive? It will not happen without the Word of God, without the Gospel. In John 15, 3, Jesus said to His disciples, Now ye are clean through, there's the avenue, through the words which I have spoken unto you. In John 17, 17, we refer to this in a sermon recently. We quote it most often. Jesus praying in Gethsemane. Father, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Now we see the link up of truth with the word. And we see why it's called the light. Because truth enlightens. Truth sets you free. But it can't set you free just simply by intellectually knowing it. You have to begin there. But again, our wills come out. And we either will to do what we now understand or we will to reject it. In 1 Peter 1.22, Peter wrote, Seeing ye have purified your souls. Watch it. In obeying the truth. Well, there's more to just knowing it and believing it to be from God. I have to obey it. And nobody's ever been saved except that they obeyed the truth. That's when faith comes alive. James chapter 2. Faith, apart from works, is dead. A whole host of folks have faith, but they don't obey. And the only level they've reached, the devil level, according to James. For even the devil believes and trembles. So it's not a matter of knowing. Do you think any, that the devil doesn't know that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the Son of God? More than that, he knows he'll judge him someday and send him to torment. He never has any desire to obey him. It's hard for me to grasp such a being as that, but that's, that's the father of lies and a murderer from the beginning and the source of all our woes. Now, what's going to take us out from under that power? The gospel, the word of God. James 1 verse 18, James said to Christians, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. So again, if we're to be begotten and thus to be born of the water and the Spirit, it's going to have to be through the word of truth. And it's a truth that sets us free. It won't set us free if we don't do what he says. Never has, never will. In 1 Peter 1, 23, he says, and this ties together what I just said, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. In Psalm 19, 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. By the way, preview, this advertisement. So I see converting come out in that verse. Come hear the rest of the story on Sunday morning about conversion. In Acts eleven fourteen, 14, notice Cornelius was told, Who shall tell thee words? You send to Peter. He's at Simon the Tanner's house in Joppa by the sea. And you cause him to come here, and he'll tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. Well, Peter tell him the gospel. The gospel is the power of God to save, the gospel is the light. If you're willing to comply with the mandates and principles of the gospel, salvation's yours. In Philippians 2.16, he says to Christians, holding forth the word of life. Now, that's what we're to be doing. If you're a child of God this afternoon, this evening, 
we hold forth the word of life. We hold it forth by living it. We hold it forth by teaching it. We hold it forth by defending it. In 2 Corinthians 5, 19, Paul said he's committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Nobody's going to be reconciled to God without the word of reconciliation. Man sinned and is estranged from God, cut off, lost in his trespasses and sins. If he's to be saved, he must be reconciled to God. And it's the word of reconciliation. It's the gospel, the power of God to save. In Acts 13, 26, it is declared by Paul, to you, Luke records it, is the word of this salvation sent. When you preach the gospel of Christ, when you teach in a home Bible study, when you're answering a question from somebody about spiritual matters, then you're sending them the way of salvation. In James 1.21, we're taught the attitude that ought to be in our minds as we approach the will of God, set out in the word of God, the gospel of Christ, the power of God to save. And he says, now this is my responsibility. Receive with meekness. A disposition of submission toward properly constituted authority. Well, to Jesus, who's been given all authority in heaven and on earth, gave to him by his Father. So, receive with meekness the engrafted word. American Standard says the implanted word. Why? Which is able to save your soul. In John chapter 6 and verse 63, Jesus said, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You want a, a spiritual encounter, to use a modern terminology? Well, just honestly study the Bible. Study to show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. And you'll have the greatest spiritual encounter you can have because you'll look into the mind of God and see yourself as God sees you and see from His Word what needs to be corrected. Also, you'll see what needs to be strengthened. And if you're living righteously, which means you're living by the Word of God, you'll see encouragement to keep on doing the same. Be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. And we learn from Paul's writing to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians 6, 17, the sword of the Spirit. How does the Spirit work? Well, everybody wants to have some sort of a spirit. I started to say tonight, when I was asked as spur of the moment to do this, I'll have to wait till the Spirit moves me. Well, the Spirit's been moving me a long time because I had my head in the book. I don't know the other way He's going to do it. So He said, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So if you want to be touched by the Spirit, if you like that terminology, then you just study deeply and honestly the good Scriptures and the sword of the Spirit will begin to work on you. In Jeremiah 23, 29, Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord? But then He not only likens it to a fire, if you look in this same verse, Is not my word like a fire, he says, and then he says, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Some people sometimes say, well, that old brother's so hard-headed, I can knock him right upside the head. Brethren, I've, I've done a whole lot of knocking brethren upside the head because I just preached the word right to them. Now, can I hit any harder than that? Can you hit any harder than that? And can you hit yourself any harder than that if you'll just accept the truth and change everything else in your life that makes you out of harmony with the truth? Of course, Luke 8, 11 says the seed of the kingdom is the word of God. So if you want the kingdom, you plant the seed of the kingdom. Now, many of you have planted something in your life and you expected to get from the seed you planted if it was cucumber seed, you expect to get cucumbers. That's the seed principle. That's taught so clear and so plain. If you want the kingdom, sow the seed of the kingdom. And we have a song. Are you sowing the seed of the kingdom, brother? 
I will not make a play on words on that, but you'll just have to think about it. In Psalm 119, 105, the scripture says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. And then here's the key to you and me, because it was written to Christians. The principle applies to all those, even if they would become Christians, but originally it was addressed directly to our faithfulness in the church. James 1.22, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. John wrote in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 5, But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. I don't know how much we hear about love. And most of what we hear is not what the Bible teaches. So if we're going to have a proper understanding of God, who is love, if we're going to understand how God loves the world, what kind of love it is, if we're going to understand how we should love our own souls, if we're going to understand how we should love our neighbors, if we're going to understand how we should love lost souls as God loves lost souls, you've got to go to the Word. You must go to the Word if we're going to grow in love as children of God so Christ can be seen in us. Listen, but whoso keepeth His Word... In him, verily or truly, the love of God is perfected. When I see people disobedient to the word and they talk about loving God, they don't love God. You love God as you keep his word. I don't know how to love God about his word to tell me. I said a while back, I don't know how to even be an enemy of somebody except to follow what the Bible tells me to as far as being an enemy as God said. In John twelve forty eight. He that rejecteth me, Jesus said, and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him. The words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Here's the assurance of the power of the word in, and its endurance. 24, 35 of Matthew. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So we must learn to respect the Word of God. We must do our best not to substitute our own think so, our own likes and dislikes. A lot of times we can talk about how, oh, we ought to have the Word of God behind everything we'll even practice. But I wonder how many people today, even in the Lord's church, thought throughout the day when they started to do something or they were thinking about something. Now, does the New Testament authorize me to think this way? Because, you see, that's Jesus in the New Testament saying, this is the way you ought to think. Does the New Testament tell me I ought to do this or that or the other? Do we ever think that way? Well, it's high time that we start doing so since whatever we do in word or in deed is to be done in the name of Christ by His authority, giving thanks to God and the Father through Him. So it will be by the Word of God that we reach heaven. And it will be by the proper disposition of mind as we approach the Word of God that allows Christ's will to be done in us. Thus we must be obedient. If you need to obey the gospel, we can only direct you to the Word of God. I'm not going to direct you to your family. I'm not going to direct you to your best friends. I'm not going to direct you to this church or the other church. Alone. I will direct you to the Word of God. And if somebody comes telling you what they're saying to you is the Word of God, do you have a Bible? Then you can check up on them and see, is it the Word of God? Same's true when it comes to my preaching, anybody else's preaching, whoever's teaching. We need to be studying our Bibles to make sure. Because all humans are fallible. We all make mistakes. No matter how dedicated we are, no matter how sincere we are, no matter how loyal we are to Christ and the Word of God, we make mistakes. So we want to check up on that. We want to be sure that we placed our soul's salvation in the truth of God's Word. If you're not a Christian, now it's time to become one. You may not see the sun rise tomorrow. You may step into eternity tonight. And so we ask you to believe with all of your heart that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the Son of God. Romans 10, 17, John 8, 24. Repent of your sins, Acts 17, 30. Confess your faith in Christ that He's the Son of God, Romans 10, 10. Complete your obedience to the gospel plan of salvation by being buried with your Lord in baptism because that's what the Bible says. It didn't begin with me, 
didn't begin with any person in this room or anybody in the world. It began with God in heaven revealing it to the writers of the Bible in particular, especially the New Testament. If you're a child of God and you've wandered from the truth, we urge you to have a hum humble attitude and repent of your sins. Come to God confessing them and pray for forgiveness. You can do that now. It's such a simple thing to do. If you'll receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul, so do it now while we stand and sing.